Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And I hope everybody's having a great day or a great night wherever you guys are watching this from. Uh, today is a very exciting day. So at the current moment in time that I am recording this, the market is having a fantastic run. Uh, Bitcoin is nearing extreme resistance as well as major altcoins are as well. And QNT is definitely one of them on the 24 hour span, though we are seeing a ton of altcoins jumping out as you guys do see here. You love to see it. Um, you know, Graph is one that I have personally been accumulating like crazy. So you love to see that breaking out. Um, we also do see, of course, Chainlink doing pretty good movements as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, like this market is looking pretty good for all coins right now, as well as even Bitcoin and Ethereum. But like I said, please be aware that we are nearing major resistance. I'm watching 25 to 28K on Bitcoin closely. Um, on QNT, we have been addressing and watching, of course, the uh, $150 level, as you guys do see it put on the chart there, about $152 is the major area to look at uh, you see like the two major spikes here back here where we did reject off of it and uh you know since then you know everybody has been preparing for it to you know majorly hit this resistance and just smash through it and go to 500 dollars plus and like we go right on a massive bull run q and t you know decouples from bitcoin and just goes absolutely parabolic now what are the chances of that I would say pretty low um, and that is not me being you know a bear or anything like that in fact I really don't care if QNT ever goes under a hundred dollars I mean would I enjoy if it did yeah 100% but to me you know I'm expecting the 50 to 70 dollar level once again because we are nearing this massive resistance zone on not only Bitcoin but also on QNT and when we really kind of look at Bitcoin, we are still in a bear market and we could still come back down. And I'm watching that 20.5 to 20.7K region. And if we do reject off of like 25 to 28K, a lot of these altcoins are going to get hurt massively. Remember, as Bitcoin is actually starting to break out, we'll most likely see dominance drastically increasing as well. So when Bitcoin does drop, Remember, all coins will get hurt even more. So please be aware of that. It doesn't mean that you should sell your QNT or anything like that. No, do not do that. Um, but just in case, have fiat on the sidelines. Now, today I'm actually going to be talking to you guys about this article going back as far as 2015. Uh, this shows us the entire breakdown of the markets. Now, at this current moment in time, or well, I should say, when this uh, article was posted at that moment in time, Bitcoin was worth about $5 billion market cap. Since then, we have, you know, rose drastically. In fact, we have done over a 100x opportunity on Bitcoin itself. And uh, when we really kind of look at the other markets, though, I know that a lot of these markets have gained value. For example, like you look at like even some of like the world's richest people, 79.2 billion. Like since then, like a lot of these numbers have grown massively um, I would love to see a full-on updated view of this I couldn't find any other major you know viewpoint on this I could actually real quick let me pause this video and go check that out okay so I was actually able to find a little bit of an updated one this is going back to May 27th 2020 uh, so again still pretty yeah I mean it's about two years old but it is what it is it will work um, at that current moment in time, cryptocurrency in general had about $244 billion worth of value under its belt. We surpassed silver. Now, to me, I do believe that we will start to go after, you know, for example, uh, gold um, in market cap, which we could definitely talk about. And uh, we do see all of the other major, you know, you know, price points here, like the world's billionaires, $8 trillion. We do see gold. So here is gold, $10.9 trillion at the time. Now it's like worth over $11 trillion. This will be our next target. To me personally, I think that we will flip the gold market cap this next major run up, um, which is going to be monumental for crypto. I think that's going to be very substantial. And I know that a lot of people are going to say like, there's absolutely no way, there's no way that we're going to, you know, hit $10 trillion in market cap value. Please just sit back and watch the fireworks because it's going to be monumental, especially as more and more access to crypto is uh, is being developed and released. So just pay attention to that. And also the Fortune 500 here, as you guys do see over here, pretty large. Um, NASDAQ as well, like this is, of course, the stock market. $89.5 trillion money supply sitting at about like 35.2 trillion for narrow money, broad money, 95.7 trillion, uh, global debt, 253 trillion. 
and uh, we do see global real estate 280.6 trillion I think that this is now like a 320 trillion dollar market um, we do see global wealth 360.6 trillion uh, derivatives now this is a little bit questionable like we don't really know the value of this market um, they are saying about roughly 558.5 trillion dollars on the low end estimate uh, we also do see you know notional value high end estimate one tr uh, quadrillion dollars and uh, you know this is you know determined to be like one tr quadrillion to like 2.7 quadrillion dollars so it's a very substantial amount of money now like I said when we are talking about everything happening around this space and we're talking about a lot of these major you know opportunities in this market um, these are the you know major markets that we're basically going after in terms of market cap value now are we going to grasp all of the money and get to like the quadrillion dollar you know area it's hard to say um, but I could definitely see us getting to the point of like stock market you know valuations where we're worth 90 trillion dollars market cap value which is going to be life-changing for a lot of individuals that do stay with this market I personally am going to be with this market forever I mean I'm 24 years old so I'm definitely going to be paying attention to this market as it unfolds rapidly and uh, why do I think that crypto is going to play a pivotal role going forward well we talk about ISO 222 and I know that everyone has their own way of saying this I, I know that there's people that say ISO 20022 which is like weird um, Again, like I, I don't really have a preference on how I personally say it. I just say ISO 222. It just sounds better. Um, but here's how it will impact the crypto industry. So here we have ISO 222 coins may be treated more leniently, you know, by regulators and force mass adoption of the standard. I think that this is a, not correct at all because again, like Ripple with XRP is, you know, fully compliant. Um, but we do see down here like ISO 222 is an international standard for exchanging electronic messages between financial institutions via SWIFT, uh, the main financial, financial messaging network used by banks across the world. Now, the thing about ISO 222 to me is it's going to free up a lot of friction within the system as they do say down here like increasing the amount of information that can be communicated and improving interoperability. In addition to changing the traditional banking and financial services industry, the migration from traditional SWIFT messaging uh, to ISO 2022 could also dramatically impact the crypto industry. Specifically, coins that comply with the standard may be more rapidly adopted into the traditional financial system. Yes, and this is what we are watching for. We're watching to see if this actually does happen. Now, they do talk about like if large you know, cap crypto assets like Bitcoin or Ethereum are integrated into the SWIFT system and given official ISO numbers, this could radically change the way that crypto and fiat currency ecosystems coexist. Now, to me, I don't think that Bitcoin and Ethereum need to be ISO compliant. And you might be wondering, well, why? Well, it's because Quant. Quant is compliant. Um, we do see that Quant is compliant and it has been added to the list. Um, but also the protocol actually allows for Bitcoin and Ethereum to be interconnected between the legacy and the crypto driven world. So, you know, those two, I don't think that they have anything to worry about. Now, again, a lot of these tokens, like we don't know exactly what's going to happen with these tokens with ISO 222. And I do think that they even say that down here as well. Um, I think that they said it um, in the conclusion. So, you know, clearly it's the future of the world, you know, wide interbank communication. And with many believing that cryptocurrency is the future of money, the fusion between these two systems could bring on an explosion in popularity and usage of cryptocurrencies between traditional crypto focused decentralized financial entities. It's too early to say how this will impact the crypto market. Yes, I do believe so. Um, a lot of people have their own hypothetical, you know, situations around this. To me, I'm not going to sit here and speculate. Uh, what I will say is this. Going back to 2019, we did see this uh, major update from the International Monetary Fund. Yes, this is on their website. This goes back to, like I said, 2019. There's a whole PDF on this, um, but we do see here, we must prepare for a possibly uh, turbulent transition to a new international monetary system. Um, since then, we did see this update from February 9th, 2022, the future of money gearing up for a central bank digital currency. Now, they have been really kind of paying attention a little bit to central banks and how they have been adopting CBDCs. Uh, we do see up here, you know, with CBDCs, they can potentially offer more resilience, more safety, greater availability, and lower costs than private forms of digital money. This is clearly the case when compared to unbanked crypto assets that are inherently volatile. The funny thing about this is that, like, I don't know who 
needs to hear this. I don't know who needs to like be involved in crypto to understand that if you have an asset that is settling a transaction within seconds, um, the price is not going to change drastically. It's not going to be volatile. In fact, I would argue the fact that when you are transacting with something like XRP, where you are you know, settling a, a transaction within three to five seconds, it is less volatile than fiat. And yes, I do believe that crypto is much better than fiat for transactional value. Um, and then we do see down here, like, and even you know, the better managed and regulated stable coins may not be quite a match against a stable and well-designed central bank digital currency. The funny thing about this is guess what? You would need to launch a CBDC on a private or public ledger in order for it to be efficient enough to actually be adopted into a monetary system. If you do not have a CBDC issued on a private or you know public ledger, guess what? You are stuck with just another digital coin that is tied to fiat currency that has the you know same inefficiencies as fiat currency. We need ledgers. DLTs are the key here. Um, but CBDCs could fundamentally change the structure of the U.S. financial system. I completely agree. I think that we are getting to the point where CBDCs are going to be huge. Now, first off, lesson one, no one size fits all around CBDCs. Financial stability and privacy considerations are paramount to the design of CBDCs. And that brings me to lesson number three, balance. Um, and yeah, I mean, like there's a lot to really kind of unpack here, but there's quite a bit of major innovation already happening. There's over 100 countries that are already exploring CBDCs and a few have already, you know, had a proof of concept or even had a launch of them. China is one that has been ahead of the game for a while now. Now, why do I bring this up? Well, the Federal Reserve has been included within these studies for a while and going back to February 3rd as well. Um, I think that this was February 9th. So yeah, within like the same time frame, uh, the Fed announced this using distributed ledger technology for payment directories. Now, to me, when we really kind of look at DLT in general, it definitely is probably one of the most pivotal moments in time to really kind of be a, a part of crypto and have access to investment vehicles like DLTs. Why? Well, because I do think that these DLTs are going to change the entire landscape of the financial system. But the funny thing about Q&T is you can't technically invest into um, Hyperledger or even R3 Corda. But guess what? Having access to Quant gives you access to both of them because Hyperledger already has um, mentioned the fact that, hey, we are exposed to Quant. We have chosen them for our you know, interoperability solution, and they are a great solution for interoperability between the legacy and the digital world. So to me, you know, quant is a one size fits all aspect around the entire interoperability standard within DLT and even the legacy system. Now down here, they do mention both PS, uh, P2P and B2B uh, payments that are highly fragmented and not interoperable. Uh, or intropable, sorry. Directories operate in closed ecosystems because service providers treat their network and accompanying uh, information as a valuable asset. Closed ecosystems typically arise from the lack of common standards, which lead to a firm to protect a network uh, that they have spent months and years building over time. DLT has the potential to change this dynamic by offering new ways to think about how directory services can operate. A potentially defining feature of DLT is that it allows information exchange without the need to transfer ownership of a data assets through a distributed and possibly federated database model. Model. Funny thing is that we have federated side chains on the XRP ledger. Uh, but yeah, I think that DLT, I, I think that when we talk about the payment landscape, we are headed towards a, a, a ledger society where we will see DLT uh, be our new full on um, financial uh, system. Um, and the reason why is because DLT to me, like ledger technology itself, is going to be the base point foundation for CBDCs to be fully, um, you know, like issued on uh, because they can allow for public and private ledger use. Um, and we actually do see down here, like the conclusion DLT allows for a rethinking of how information is kept, shared and managed despite the potential power of this technology. It has not been widely adopted in the financial sector or elsewhere. Uh, this is in part because DLT was built for a specific purpose, for which they may not be uh, many, or which they may not be uh, many practical use cases yet. And uh, the funny thing is, I say yet is because like CBDCs could 100% be issued on this and unlock the capabilities to changing the entire monetary system. 
we do see down here that the information exchange is associated with a payment alias um, or alias, sorry, a directory or a business registry could capitalize on DLT's capabilities to promote secure, efficient exchanges of information that result in a higher level of data integrity. Yes, DLTs are extremely secure. Like when we look at some of the DLTs within this space, I mean, even like Hedera, right? Um, if we go back to like the ISO um, list, funny thing is like Hedera is rumored to be compliant. I would actually say that it's probably 100% compliant, but hey, that's me being me. Um, ABFT compliance is huge or consensus is huge for security. Um, Algorand, extremely secure. IOTA is pretty secure as well. Zinfin, really secure. XRP and XLM, very great assets. Uh, they have proven their security over time as well. Um, ADA, eh, I'm questionable on ADA, but it is what it is. Um, to me, there's like so many great opportunities within the space around DLT technology alone. And I do think that, like I said, once we are ushering into this new monetary system, AKA built around ledger technology, there's going to be one player that's pivotal for it all. And that is Quant because they have proven to not only 100% you know, solve interoperability between DLTs and legacy systems, but they have also proven the fact that it's tried and tested through things like Sia with Nexi or even Oracle. I mean, this is a giant of a use case. And like I said, with this market ballooning to 10 to 50 to even $100 trillion in market cap value, <laughs> okay, Q&T, and I know that this is going to catch a lot of people off guard. And this is also why I say like, it does not matter what price Q&T is at. For me, I, I just love getting Q&T under $100 because it's free money to me. Um, Long term, Q&T will have a $1 trillion market cap. If we are talking about the money flows over DLT technology, like over XRP, they're going after $156 trillion market by themselves. If Q&T is bridging the gap between, you know, the fiat currency systems and the DLT systems with digital assets, you're looking at hundreds to, uh, to like, you're looking at hundreds of trillions of dollars transacted on a yearly basis. So Q&T having a market cap of one to like five trillion to even ten trillion dollars long term is inevitable to me. Q&T will be well worth over a hundred thousand dollars eventually. It's going to take time, but this to me is such an incredible opportunity. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day or beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. It's been Nick. Peace out, guys.